Lawmakers in Kaduna State have approved surgical castration as punishment for those convicted of raping children under the age of 14. State Governor Nasir al Rufai will, however, need to sign the bill for it to become law. He has previously supported castration to prevent rapists from re-offending. The move follows public outrage over a wave of rapes which prompted the nation's state governor to declare a state of emergency. The state penal law provides for 21 years imprisonment for rape and life imprisonment in the case of a child. Joining us live to have a conversation around this is Anthonia Ojenagbong, who is a rape survivor's advocate, and also Bukola um, Oshidigbo, who is also a women's rights advocate. Good to have you, Bukola and Antonia. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Great. Now, well, I'm glad to be here. Good. Bukala, we'll begin with you. Uh, do you consider this move as acceptable before the law, or this is just a futile exercise? I'd like to start by clarifying um, when you said um, child rapists. First and foremost, children are not raped, they are defiled. So let's, let's get that clarification clear from the onset. Um, so, for, and then taking me to your question that... Um, Take that question again, please. Yes, I'm saying that, uh, do you think that this move is acceptable before the law or is just a futile exercise? Um, I will respond to that starting from the, um, the issue of, are we ready? Do we have all the processes in place to ensure that this will be followed properly? Because it's one thing to put pen to paper and say, this is what we want to do. Are there processes, are the processes clearly highlighted to ensure smooth running of this um, thing we have on the paper? So having castration in our law, for example, are there clear processes, clear procedures that will be followed duly to ensure that this becomes a success when it is passed into law? All right, so in your position, you are saying unless uh, you have action is what is needed and not just putting word to paper. Am I correct? Very correct. Very correct. All right, let me hear Antonia's take on this matter. Antonia, you, you had the question. What's your thought? Do you consider this as going to be effective or just yet another futile exercise? Um, I'm neutral. I'm, I'm not excited because it's not as if we don't have the laws before. When um, the, like the penal code already stipulated 21 years for an adult rape, then life imprisonment for child defilement. How many people have been sentenced to our prisons? How many people have paid for the crimes they are committing? And if we realize, uh, immediately that tweet went viral, it was deleted. Why was that tweet deleted? So, like Bukala said, let's watch and see. All right. Bukala, uh, could you run us through how the penal code in the north operates as different from criminal code in the south? Basically, the major difference is one is applicable to the northern part of Nigeria. The other one is applicable to the southern part of Nigeria. Bearing in mind the cultural and religious beliefs of these two, to, this to, to, this separate them. Um, Part of Nigeria. For example, in the criminal code, we have the offense of bigamy, which means you cannot marry more than one wife. And taking this to the northern part of Nigeria, of course, you know virtually everybody will be, every man, so to say, every man within the marriageable age, so to say, will be in prison. And so um, the major difference is one is applicable to the north, the other one is applicable to the south. Mm -hmm. And taking, it, taking into cognizance their religious and traditional beliefs. All right, thank you for that clarity. And if I may ask you, uh, Antonia, do you think that this will serve as a deterrent in any way? I mean, judging from experience, and if I add a further question to that, do you in any way think or uh, believe that rapists even fear the law? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think um, that um, rapists fear the law, but I think if it's implemented, it would actually serve as a deterrent because the truth is um, this rape um, crisis is becoming an epidemic and the earlier we nip it in the board, the better. 
you know, a lot of these rapists are beginning to, they, um, they, they behave with impunity because they know that nothing will happen, most especially if you have loose cash, you have the money to get a very good lawyer who will be able to defend you and all that. So I think that if one or two persons are sentenced and the lorry is being made effective, it would actually serve as a deterrent. Mm -hmm. Then it will make other people realize that, oh, it's not business as usual. If it's going to be effective, I'm all for it, you know. But because of the way our system has been over a long time, for someone like me, when I heard it, I was not excited. I just said, mm, one of those things they would say. But let's see how it goes. Mm, let's see how it goes. Now, Bukala, what's the relevance of this move? Do you in any way foresee that other states might follow suit? Well, I, I smiled. I, I, I smiled immediately. You asked that question. You see, one thing about our, I don't know whether it's peculiar to this part of the world. One thing we do is when somebody sets a precedent, when a state sets a precedent, it's, it's a follow come thing. Everybody jumps on the vehicle and then they do the same thing without doing due diligence, mm -hmm. without taking into cognizance is this thing relevant? Is this thing applicable to us? Is this something we can refine? Is this something that we are interested in? Is this some, there are so many is it, is it, is it questions that needs to be asked before we jump on the vehicle of let's run with this. But like, it's, yes, it's true. I foresee people, I foresee other states running after this, especially if this is accepted. If, if people show positive signs to this, I foresee other states taking, towing that line. Mm. But if, if I still stay more on you, I'm just wondering, how do we ensure that, you know, wrong persons are not punished through blackmail? Well, that's why I said before the governor assents to this bill, can we be very, very serious, deliberate and thorough reading every letter of this law properly, interpreting it properly. Because the problem is once the governor signs this bill, the question or the point we're now going to start raising is a review. What we ought to have done ahead of the signing it into law. It's now what we are going to fall back on. So mm -hmm. my point is, let's read this thing. I've not set my eyes on the law anyway, so I wouldn't be able to speak on the content. But I would suggest that this law needs to be scrutinized properly. Give it to criminal lawyers, give it to people with who write criminology, give it to people who have understanding of how crimes operate and how they are addressed before it is signed into law. Hmm. All right, let me speak to Antonia. I mean, we often hear that proving a rape case is one of the most difficult things to do. Now, how will this law in any way help victims of rape? Um, right now, we say to um, rape victims, once the incident happens, do not take your bath. Go to the hospital so that um, relevant evidences can be kept. So that by the time you're ready to prosecute, uh, um, there will be something to fall back on. Now, the good thing now is that this law is going to give hope to a lot of rape survivors who prior to now thought that nothing good can come out from the law and that there was no respite for rape survivors. But this law now will help them realize that, oh, apparently we can get justice. So I think that um, it's going to give a lot of hope to survivors if it is being implemented. Right. St still, still on you, uh, uh, Antonia, on the victims, which seems to be the subject, object of interest, you know, how can rape be prevented in the first place? So, I mean, sharing tips uh, from experience, what do people need to do uh, not to even fall victim? Okay, I, I think that um, for starters now, we, we need to begin to engage the bystander theory, which means if you see something that you suspect, you would say something. Then we need to begin to engage the men. The truth is we might never get a headway until men and boys are joined in this um, journey. In They are also inculcated into this so that we can stop this Babe, you know, we need to educate our men. We need to educate everybody to know that we need to begin to imbibe healthy behaviors. 
like for instance our teenagers we need to let them know healthy dating tips like the teenagers knowing that it's not cool for you to force a girl to do what is what she doesn't want to do it's not cool to touch a girl inappropriately it is also not cool for a girl to touch a boy inappropriately because they realize now that it's not just girls who get raped men also get raped so as we're talking to the girl child we should also involve the boy child we need to have community policing everybody needs to be their brother keeper we need to have parents sit down and talk to their children. No more shying away from this topic. Because if you don't talk, if you don't engage your children, they will get this information, will get the wrong information from outsiders, and this is going to cause harm down wood. So we in every hand, everybody need to be proactive. We need to get more hands on deck so that we can fight this scourge to a standstill. Right, and then to Bukola, the law also recommends 21 years imprisonment for corporates. Is that more like it, if I may ask you? Well, the point is we want to punish the offenders. So 21 years, like Anthony said, where we started, everything still boils down to how many convictions have we secured when it comes to rape. Even with the so-called 21 years, how many convictions have we secured? So I will say that 21 years, yes, it, it's not bad for a start. It's not a bad idea. But again, go to the prisons that we have in Nigeria today. They are overpopulated. We are still talking about the prisons, mm -hmm. decongestion, talking about even cells, cells, decongestion, and all of that. And 70% of these so called um, prisoners are under their waiting trial or on their waiting trial list. Some people have even served their jail sentences while awaiting trial. Mm. So we need, we need to have, um, we need to even decongest the prison. We need to maybe departmentalize the prison. We need, a lot of things need to be done. A mm. lot of work needs to be done. But 21 years is not a bad idea for you to start anyway, to serve mm. as deterrents. Bukala, I think that's a very crucial point that you have just brought in there about the prison uh, situation. But that, that will be a conversation for another time, really. Uh, still asking you, Bukala, the bill recommends total castration and bilateral sapingectomy for rapists in the state. And this suggests that a female culprit can be punished. Now, in what circumstance can that happen? Okay, so if we look at the ratio... The, when we talk about rape, it's going to be, if we put how many, how many male have been raped, how many female have been raped, definitely that of the girl will outnumber that of the men. So <clears throat> maybe, <clears throat> maybe, excuse me, please, maybe we don't have um, the issue yet reported for a male being raped. Though we know it is happening, but the numbers are still very minimal. Um, so that's why I said we need to look at this law line by line. So, for example, now that we have just pointed that out, can the lawmakers take, go back to the drawing board and include in this law before the governor signs, include the, the, that bit of what is going to happen to a female that rapes a male? Mm -hmm. All right. Finally, to Antonia, what's your thoughts on the same uh, question? On the same um, pers personally, I don't believe in the castration thing. I believe that we have um, existing laws, which, well, if well implemented, we would have successes. Now, we, um, we don't have more men talking about um, their experiences because we don't allow the men to cry in this part of the world. We, we tell them to man up. So a lot of men are masking. You have um, one in every six boys who have been sexually molested, but the men don't speak up just the way the women speak up. So if this law comes to place, I think it's going to help both the men and the, female and, the, and the women who have gone through this, because the truth is a lot of men have been, were sexually molested while they were growing up. But because we would never allow them to talk, like I said, it's uh, making it more difficult. But this law recognizes the fact that both a man can also be raped. 
So if a woman rapes a man, the woman also should pay for it. Mm. And the truth is, in our advocacy work, we have found out that more boys are being sexually molested by women. A lot of women are use a lot of women are using younger boys as their sex toys. More boys were introduced to sex by women. So when this law comes to place, it's going to help both the male and the female gender together. All right. If, if I may ask you, uh, Antonia, do you not think that um, more focus, there's not so much of focus in this direction that you are clearly talking about? What's the role of therapy and sensitization in this matter? Okay. Therapy and counseling helps you to move on. Like I wasn't able to, five years ago, I would never grant, I would never speak um, on TV because of um, the shame and the stigma attached to the fact that I'm also a survivor and my perpetrator is a family member, my uncle. But with the help of counseling and therapy, it helps you to move on. It helps you to live a normal life again. It helps you to realize that your life did not end with that episode of rape. And if it was the multiple rape, it also helps you to realize that there is life ahead and there's so much you can achieve instead of just wallowing in that pain because the pain is so much. You know, the pain of rape is like the pain of being shot by a bullet straight into the heart. You know, it actually kills the person emotionally and mentally. So therapy and counseling helps you to get your life back, helps you to tell your story without any shame, helps you to talk publicly and not feel stigmatized because we have a lot of stigmatization and um, judgments going on. That is why we don't have more people who are bold to say, okay, this um, stuff happened to me. But with the help of therapy and counseling, you move, it helps you to move on. Yes, it's a journey. It's not a, it's not a one day thing. It's not something that happens just a day, you know, but therapy and counseling is the most important thing that will happen to the survivor after the incident. Right. Antonia, we recognize your strength and courage to be able to share your story. Thank you for that personal touch that you brought to the conversation. And then uh, to Bukola as well, do you foresee a time in this country where we will be done with conversation <laughs> around, you know, around rape? I hope it will be during my lifetime. I really hope and pray. It's been during my lifetime because it's a long journey, a very long one at that. It's a long journey. Right. Uh, I think but that... anything can happen. It's possible. It is possible. That's a good way to wrap it. I want to say thank you so very much, uh, Bukola Oshidibo, for your thoughts. And of course, and, and Antonia Ojenagun for bringing your own personal <laughs> experience to the conversation as well. Do keep safe, both of you out there. Thank you for having me.